P4 Telos is infamous for high food usage and dangerous special attacks, be it from newcomers who eat too much, get overwhelmed by golems and specs, or some other factor within the phase, it's commonly cited as a phase that makes or breaks most kills, sometimes even more than P5. This guide is aimed towards everyone, from beginners to experts, from slow, safe strategies to fast, riskier strategies. Hopefully those struggling with the phase can understand what makes P4 tick, and those looking forward to pushing a rage beyond 1000% and or get fast and safe phases can learn something as well. And even if you're not looking for the most optimal rotations, maybe you'll be able to settle for a nice middle ground between different speeds. Skip to these points on the screen to skip to whatever section you want, for beginners or for fast phases. However, I recommend that you watch the entire guide anyway, as some later strategies will build off of other strategies introduced earlier in the guide, and some tips are useful no matter how you're approaching P4. So, let's get straight into it. Let's begin with the slowest, but safest strategy. For full disclosure, the gear I am using for this approach is full subjugation, Nox Staff, Torment, and even Runic Accuracy. You can downgrade the Noxious Staff for a Cyrer Weaponry or Obliteration, or upgrade a Sea Singer Weaponry, but whatever the case may be, you should be fine until you get to beyond 500%-ish. While this isn't what most people do in Telos nowadays would have, especially with no maniacal, it's for the sake of demonstration to show the importance of fundamentals over gear. When you're starting off this phase, it depends on what spec Telos is going to use first. No matter what he starts off with though, hit him as hard as possible and try to get him down before the first spec. Depending on what's first, however, keep these things in mind. If it is uppercut first, just DPS him down as quickly as possible even if you got the spec. Since uppercut first is no big deal even outside of the font, just keep hitting him. Dodge the uppercut and just continue wearing away at him and phase him into the font. If you fail, however, aim to only get one auto attack after the uppercut. Otherwise, play it safe and you can afford to just wait for the Amna Bomb. If you get Amna Bomb first, make sure you have Debilitate and or Reflect ready. Right when it comes, use either Debilitate or Reflect or a combination of both if you really want. At bare minimum, you want either one, but which one depends on how quickly Telos is going to phase into the first plot. Just use Debilitate if you're just about to phase, or you can just use Reflect if he's way too high. Stack it with Debilitate if you want, but on lower rage, it's not too necessary. If using a staff, use Sonic Wave before Debilitate so you have an increased chance of landing Debilitate. If Telos' LP is way too high after an Omni Bomb, like we're talking 125k or higher, just hold off until hold still, heal from that, then phase him into the next font. With the right rotation at the start, however, this is rare. On the other hand, if you do enough DPS and he's at the cusp of phasing after Amna Bomb, just block it with Resonance and then phase. During the font, make sure you use preparation so you can get Resonance back quickly for hold still. This is a good alternative to just debilitate before the font, as it's much quicker to pull off. If you get hold still first, DPS him down quickly just like with uppercut first, and then heal from the whole still as you normally would. Then phase him into the next font as quickly as possible, just as if you got uppercut first. For the first font, use Reflect and Revenge with your shield. Attack the golems with both auto attacks and AoEs like Dragon Breath and Corruption Blast. Once you use your basic AoEs, use Ice Barrage and immediately step away. Charge up Detonate on the golems and release it after it goes off. Make sure you stack your auto attack with Detonate as well, so the golems can get killed even quicker. Kill the Volcanic Golem as soon as possible, then whittle down the rest of the golems to death, then get back on Telos. By the time you hit golems, especially at enrages lower than this, Telos would've likely started his insta-kill. 
hit him as hard as possible after he throws it at you. At higher enrages, do not be afraid of using thresholds to quickly remove golems from the field. Wall magic or a gothic staff onto volcanic at the start before you enter the font is not a bad idea if you struggle with them. After the first font, you'll want to ideally phase Telos into the second font in one of two ways. Phase after the uppercut, which is the most ideal, or phase after outer bomb, which is the second best time. Phasing after hold still isn't exactly a bad thing, but it's not exactly the most comfortable for people taking it slow. So whittle down Telos until uppercut, then phase into the font like nothing else. If you don't have enough DPS to force him after uppercut, just build to 100% adrenaline. Wait until Telos hits around 79k and keep your distance from Telos. Once Telos shoots out the Amna Bomb, wait until Telos hits around 79k and keep your distance from Telos. Once Telos shoots out the Amna Bomb, use strong basics like Dragon Breath and Corruption Blast, then right when the bomb hits you, use Barricade. This will let you block both the Amna Bomb and the font damage, which is incredibly helpful. And if you have even worse luck and you still don't have enough DPS when Amna Bomb comes, just debilitate plus reflect it and wait until hold still and resonance. Then wait for uppercut for the ideal setup. When golems spawn, do the same thing as you've done before with the first spawn. Get them into position again, spam basics and auto attacks, the usual. If you phase after uppercut, use reflect and revenge again and take down the golems. Use anticipation as well so you don't get stunned by the volcanic. If you use barricade for the Amna Bomb and font, Use Ice Barrage once you reach 50% Adrenaline, then step away, and then detonate them again. Now here's the biggest sticking point of P4. So much power. This one spec is commonly the ender of most people on higher enrages and is pretty dangerous. It's common knowledge by this point to phase right after a spec, and phasing Telos within at least 2 auto attacks until a spec will guarantee you enough time until your defense come back for SMP without any input needed. There are multiple ways to get around it. The easiest way is to simply use Shield Dome to block half damage. Up to 999%, you will get hit for around 9k, which does hurt a lot, but is of course much lower at lower enrages. Just know that it's only a last resort as an option. My preferred way of nullifying it is with Resonance or Disruption Shield. At the cost of almost nothing, you can block the hit and continue on to kill just fine. If you phase after Uppercut, just use Barricade. With Turtle Wing 3, it'll last all the way until Amna Bomb, blocking not only so much power, but also the Amna Bomb itself. Immortality is always an option, but generally, it's only just alright to use. I would shy away from this 90% of the time. Once you've dealt with it, the rest of the phase is easy pickings. You can wait for the next special attack and then phase them into the next font, or be aggressive and phase them immediately after so much power. It's up to you, but in case you want to be aggressive, be careful with Amina Bomb or Hold Still is coming up next, since once the third font finishes, your defensives might not be up early enough to deal with those specs. The third font will start instantly no matter where Telos is, so you best get inside quickly, at least you get hit by another so much power. Use Reflect, deal with minions, and then kill Telos. It's the same rotation you did for the past two fonts, basically. It's much better to just be aggressive after this and do damage instead of waiting around, unless Hold Still is coming up, in which case you can wait and then just get a heal. Deal with specs the same way you've always done. Surge the uppercut, debilitate and or reflect the Amna Bomb, resonance the Hold Still, you get the picture. That covers a slower kill strategy. Now, let's move on to quickening the pace and going into overdrive. So, you're skilled enough to get past P4 without much hassle, but now you want to pick up the pace greatly, blitzing through the phase with no slowdown to your DPS. From here, there are two ways you can approach this, Standard Spells or Ancients. Both are perfectly viable options, and while Ancients is much, much better, Standards can still have some use for Iron Man who don't want to use Ancients or those who are just lazy. So, we'll be covering that first, and then go more in-depth with how Entangle really makes P4 smooth with standards. Keep in mind that the next two strategies are going for as quickly as possible, meaning you are going to skip almost every spec and even ignore golems at higher enrages. At most, you'll only be dealing with one spec and so much power if that. If you are not confident in your skills and dealing with that, the next two sections will be as useful since they hinge on not getting specs at all and finding golems, so rely on the safer rotation as described earlier in the video. Nevertheless, let's dive right in. 
So right off the bat, you'll want to apply vulnerability with dual wield, then fire off either combust, corruption blast, or wild magic. Then swap to your staff and auto plus impact to deep impact to auto asphyxiate. By this point, he should be sufficiently lower to phase into the first bond. If not, just use some basics. This is where entangle comes in. Build a bit of adrenaline with random basics and reapply vulnerability on Telos if you like. Here, target the volcanic golem and fire an entangle at him. Walk away from him and then immediately charge up detonate on Telos. Brew up while keeping an eye on your stats so they refresh at the right time. A few seconds after the text box, Telos is preparing to fire an Amna Bomb appears. Release detonate and stack it with an auto attack and wall magic or Corruption Blast depending on your Adrenaline. Immediately follow it up with Asphyxiate and focus on DPSing and stunning him into the next font with no attacks between fonts. If he's not phased and his LP is too high, wait until the next spec so he can reset his number of auto attacks before another spec. On the second font, here's where Entangle really shines. This time however, do not use Reflect. Get into the font, Resonance and Anticipation and Revenge with Defender, approaching the font from this angle. This is extremely important, as this lines up golems perfectly so they can be trapped behind bound golems. Entangle the southernmost golems, then once you're done, step away and get ready to hit Telos. Release auto attack plus wild magic, and then auto attack plus asphyxiate to deep impact to auto guthic staff. He should be phased into the next spot again, all while you're safe from golems while barely lifting a finger on them. You may wonder why you don't use detonate. That's because if you use detonate, you won't have it available for the third font, and if you're going fast, you won't have it available for the second font anyway. So it's best to just skip it. Now this part is important if you phase into the second font with one or even zero auto attacks before so much power. Before you attack Telos, entangle him. This is also important because this completely negates Telos' freedom. A common noob trap is people trying to stun Telos immediately out of the font without using another stun or bind, which leads to Telos immediately using freedom and killing them. If it's zero attacks to so much power, you are completely out of luck and you will die to it. Entangling Telos mid-font charge completely solves this issue, and the good thing is that unlike other abilities like Impact or Deep Impact, you have multiple shots at wasting his freedom. If you splash your impact or deep impact, that is it. But since you have multiple shots at using Entangle, it doesn't sting as much if you splash the first time. And splashing more than 4 times in a row, even off aura, is extremely unlikely. Anyway, once you face Telos into the third font, surge over and stand exactly at this spot. This will lure all of the golems into a very nice spot where you only need to entangle 2 or at most 3 golems. Unlike in the second font, you don't need to entangle every single westernmost golem here. Since they like to get stuck on each other, you just need to entangle two golems northernmost to you, then run away to the southernmost edge of the font. Entangle and won't tell us, then charge up detonate. Release it when the time comes, and tell us should melt quickly in no time without needing to tank anything from his auto attacks or the golems. However, with all that said, camping standards has become outdated. With multiple rune pouches, Ancient is undoubtedly meta since he can easily use vulnerability while being able to use barrages to kill clusters of golems easily on P4 and P5. Here you'll be taking care of golems and be able to kill most of them while having an extremely easy way of avoiding them at lower enrages. At higher enrages, it's basically a slightly easier using version of standards, but binds of ice barrage won't last as long as entangle. That said, you'll also have access to Disruption Shield via Spellbox Swap that can completely nullify specs like So Much Power and Atma Bomb. Overall, it's still around the same as standards, but the usage is a bit different and much more casual once you get the hang of it. Here's what I mean. When you want to freeze the golems, do it right when Telos says you dare to defy me. Then step away, start charging up Detonate on Telos or just ready yourself up in the case of the second font, and then DPS to your heart's content. Other than that, not much else to differentiate itself from Sanders rotation wise at the very least. You still have access to Entangle with Spellbox Sauce, so if you wanted to, you can easily play just like Sanders. It's just a bit more annoying to pull off due to swapping every single time. One thousand percent plus changes quite a bit by adding rocks, which can add a bit if you're not careful, or if you don't stall like Telos to high heaven, which is the primary goal here. But there will be some backup strategy if you let slip. At this point, if you got into one thousand percent, 
you should only be using DPS strategies and not try to take it slow by tanking specs. You'll really want to start every P4 with at least 8% adrenaline. Adren pot to 33% or higher immediately, but the more the better. Ice Blitz plus Corruption Blast or Combust as soon as possible. If you're able to get 68-70% to Adrenaline at the start, Wild Magic instead of Corruption Blast or Combust. Auto Attack plus Impact, then Deep Impact, then Auto Asphyxiate if you have the Adrenaline. Under the best of circumstances, this should be enough to force him down to the first font without a single Auto Attack. However, if you want to be safe, there is an alternative. If Telos is at 130k or higher after your deep impact, just auto attack plus rack, then combust or corruption blast, basically the other bleed you didn't use. After your bleed, Telos will freedom, stall him for a bit longer, follow that up with auto attack plus asphyxiate, and then he'll be forced into the font after your sun wears off. This makes it so that he enters the font with only one auto attack. Either way, no matter how you approach it, resonance the first font hit, then reflect, then freeze golems as normal, and then detonate Telos, then force him into the font. But don't worry too much about Adrenaline. If you get completely screwed on P3, and you're starting with 0% Adrenaline, you'll be fine. Simply use Limitless, and you'll be able to use Deep Impact. Don't immediately follow up with Asphyxiate, though. Just do the safer rotation. Regardless of your rotation pre-first font, build Adrenaline on minions. Don't actively go out to kill them this time, since you do not need to. Freeze just like you do with a fast strategy with Ancients, then Detonate plus Wild Magic, Impact, Asphyxiate, Deep Impact, do Gothic Staff to finish it off. For the most part, it's the same rotation as sub 1000% with Ancients, just with tighter windows comes a different stun rotation to maximize stun time since you don't want auto attack slipping by. Before you go inside a second font, make sure you Gothic Staff Telos, if you haven't already, and freeze the two Volcanic Golems. Resonance, Reflect, Revenge with Defender, Build on Golems, then Freeze at the right time right when Telos says, you dare to defy me. As with the previous fast strategies, I don't detonate. Although it is actually worth using here, I tend not to do it since Revenge is typically more than enough, and sometimes detonate may not even be available on time, so I tend not to risk mistiming it for this font and the next font. Once I phase him into the next font, I'll actually surge towards the first font and then turn the corner around the middle part, hugging the center pit. Lure the golems from both sides into a single file line after your stun rotations. Then surge forward and entangle the first golem towards you. Resonance, reflect sonic wave to detonate, then clear the phase without any resistance. This all sounds easy, but should you get a spec, your job will be a bit more annoying. First font shouldn't have any rocks though, unless you somehow get super unlucky with DPS. Second font is the trickiest one. Wait until the rock falls, and then get inside to drain the font. After freezing the minions, hang outside the font and then rush immediately when Telos shoots out the insta-kill to minimize chances of a bad rock placement. Third font is very easy if you entangle, since dodging the rock will be no problem. At worst, you'll just lose out on your detonate, and that's really worth it if it means surviving. Finish off Telos, and you're good to go. And that's really all there is to it about recovering from rocks on P4. That wraps up everything about P4 Telos. If you enjoyed this guide and learned something, please share the video since the more people that get to learn Telos, the better. Telos is my favorite boss in this game, and most people struggle quite a bit with P4 especially, so I hope this guide answers how to properly do it. The next guide will be a 1000% plus P5 guide, teaching you how to font and zero font, dedicated for those pushing to 4000%. Look out for it in the coming weeks, and I'll see you guys later. Take care guys.